We're chatting to Akona. Hello, Akona, are you there? Hello, Akona. Hello, hello, Miss Hello. How's it going? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you sound a little bit stressed out. Now, Akona has asked me to do a question that's in the classroom mathematics book. So, for those of you watching, it's on page 139, right at the top. Okay, um, a corner. So, um, is your television set on? Because I'm getting a little bit of a um, echo. Or is your uh, volume on your TV on? Obviously, your TV must. Yes, be. <laughs> I've switched it off. Oh, did you switch it off? Okay, yes. that's cool. Okay, now, corner. Your question says if cos a is equal to four over five, and sine a is smaller than zero, right? Yes. And we've got another angle. They say cos b is equal to 12 over 13. And the info that we get here also is that B is greater than zero and smaller than 90. Okay? Mm. This is the information. And they say, if this is true, find sine A minus B. Yes. Okay. Now, a corner. I always wo worry about what they ask me to find much later. All right. Yeah. So I'm first just going to look at this information that they've given me. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. But in this question, maybe it would be useful. Um, do you recognize the sine A minus B? What's going on there? What is that? It's a, it's a compound. It's a compound angle. So, in fact, let's write it out. Yes. Sine, so, sine A. Yes. Cos B. Uh -huh. Minus. Yes. Minus sine A. Minus sine, oh. sine B. No, minus cos A. Minus cos A, yes. Sine B. Sine B, yes. Okay. So this is what we're going to need to do. We're going to have to find sine A, sine B, cos A, and cos B. Okay. Yes. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at each of these pieces of information separately because they, they, you know, they're two different angles. Mm. And what I want to establish first is which quadrants are we working in. Yes. Okay. So you draw up your ASTC diagram. You know that one? Yes. Okay, so we say, cool. Cos A is 4 over 5. That is positive. So I'm going to tick the places where cos is positive. Yes. Okay. Other bit of information, sine is less than 0. So I also need to tick the places where sine is negative. Yes. That's there and there. Do you agree with me that we are then working in the third quadrant? Yes, I agree. You agree. Okay, fantastic. Now, what I like to do is, I'm not going to draw a sketch or anything. I draw up a little table for myself, and I say X, Y, and R. And I say, look, if I'm working in the fourth quadrant, my X values will be positive. Do you agree? In which quadrant? If I'm working in the fourth quadrant, my X values will be positive. Do you agree? That's yes. the positive X axis, but my Y value will be? Positive. No, my negative. Y is negative. Okay. Yes. And R is always positive. Okay. Yes. Then I have a look at what I'm missing. Okay. So, cos is X over R. Yes, X over R. Okay. So, what am I missing? I'm missing? Y. Y. And how do you find Y? Pythagoras. Pythagoras. But if you've done this a couple of times, you'll start recognizing that that's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Yes. Okay. So, but otherwise, just because we're almost at the end of the show, I'm going to say, cool, x is 4, r is 5, and y is 3. And I get that with Pythagoras. Yes. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the next one, for the, for the cos b. Okay? Yes. Cos b is 12 over 13. That was also positive. Yeah. So now I tick the places where cos is positive. That's there and there. Mm, fourth quadrant and fifth. Fourth, uh, fourth quadrant and first. But also... My other piece of information says B is between 0 and 90. So do you see that I'm working in the first quadrant? Yes. Okay, and that's happy days because in the first quadrant, everything is positive. Yes. Okay. So I draw up another table, X, Y, and R, and I say everything's positive. And for this angle, X is 12 and R is 
13, right? Yes, maybe and, why. and why we will again find by Pythagoras, but we're running out of time, but that's 5. Okay. So y is 5, x is 12, and r is 13. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And now we're good to go. All we need to do is substitute into our formula. Yes. Okay, so, oh, you know what's happening here. All right, so now we're going to say sine A, right? Sine A, that is my first angle. Sine is Y over R, so that's minus 3 over 5. Yes, okay. And some of these I have already, but I'm just going to use my values. Then I know it's, it's um, you know, the signs are right. Cos B, cos is X over R, and I've already got cos B right there. 12 over 13. Okay, and then minus cos A, let's check A again, that's 4 over 5, both positive, we've got, oh, we, I had that one, there it is, yes, <laughs> big and bright, and then what else do we need, sine of B, and let's see, um, that's Y over R, so that's 5 over 13. Okay, yes. And then we're basically done. You young people are so good on your calculators, you'll punch it and have the, and have the answer after 10 seconds, won't you? But we'll, let, let me quickly show you. It's minus 36 over, and 5 times 13 is 65, and then minus 20. And already our denominator is the same. So that's pretty easy. We just add them, and we, the answer is minus 56 over 65. Okay, minus 6 over 65. 56 over 65, turned around. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Akona, I hope you're going to find us again. That was a really nice question and it was really <coughs> nice talking to you.